So in this video I'll be talking about the techniques and the materials used to get your guitar body to this faded 50s burst. Um, I was going for the Peter Green, Paul Kossoff kind of uh, Les Paul look. And um, yeah, I'll be talking about the spraying techniques and the dyes that I mixed, the exact dyes that I use, etc. Um, to get this nice, nice tone. Um, but if at any stage you think it's overwhelming, then um, I'll be more than happy to do it for you. So if you go to www.voodoocreek.com, that's my company, you'll be able to see my products on there with different colors. Um, I do a tsunami green, which is a really nice green burst, a, um, an ocean blue burst, and a dark tobacco sunburst. And it's possible I could do those colors as well. So uh, yeah, get yourself down there to voodoocreek.com and uh, email, me, e email me through the contact on there and uh, maybe we can uh, talk. All right, thank you. Enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Steve from Voodoo Creek. Let's get into this. Okay, here she is. I've just cut the tape. Let's have a look. Back in step. Oh, wow. Well, that's really nice. Oh, there's an instruction booklet. That's great. Oh, it's beautiful. That's going to be lovely. Oh, wow. First thing I notice is the, uh, the thickness of the maple cap. Because that's the secret of the Les Paul tone. The uh, the maple cap giving it the bite over the warm the warm mahogany. It's really nice. That's only like three. Well, it's four pieces of mahogany, which just seems about right. Top looks beautiful, but straight away I'm noticing a swipe across there where the binding's been put on. I don't know whether you can see that. But, um, and the glue has been wiped off. So that's really important. If you're gonna use any stains, then you, that needs to come off because that's not gonna be porous because there's glue in the pores of the wood and this will be porous. So you'll see a blotch around there. Um, there's two ways of doing that, sanding or acetone. So it's just a really thin veneer on top of the maple. So you've got to be really careful because if you soak it with acetone, it could loosen the glue that's holding this veneer down. And obviously if you sand it, then you could go through because it's like a millimeter. So um, I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with that next. So um, just a bit of information for you. Um, I did try putting the dye directly to the material. Um, because I really thought the acetone and the sanding had got rid of the um, excess glue that was in the pores, um, but it didn't. And um, unfortunately, when I started spraying, I started to see the soak line where the, the transition between where it was soaking in and where it wasn't. So I had to stop cleaning all off and um, very light sanding and uh, start again. And when I started again, I went with the original plan of using the mixture of shellac and dye. And the first couple of coats use as seal coats and let them dry, put them on really thin, let them dry off over that residue and then start building up your color. That's the way to do it. So learn by my mistake. Uh, luckily, I managed to rectify it pretty quickly and, uh, and all is well. Right, so these are the dyes I like to use. They're made by Transfast and they're water soluble dyes. Although you can get the ones that are actually dissolved in alcohol, which would be better because 
essentially that's what we're going to do we're going to dissolve these in a little bit of water and then mix them in with alcohol and then mix that alcohol into our shellac as a tint and we're using de-waxed shellac which is this kind of stuff because it makes a good sealer and you anything will adhere to de-wax shellac so if you're going to put nitrocellulose on afterwards there's no problem um, but if there's wax in the natural shellac then it won't adhere um, so i like a ratio of um four to one with the one being the early american maple which is quite a dark brownie ready color and this uh four parts of this honey maple so you can see that so this is a two table uh, teaspoon measure that's a one teaspoon measure so now i'm going to put them together So here's the honey and maple. So two teaspoons of this. A bit wider. And then half a teaspoon of this oh bloody hell that's expensive stuff I'll have to clear that up and put it back in afterwards it's a bit clumsy there you go and then I've got hot tap water in this other jar and I'm just going to put enough in there to uh, make this into a paste that may be enough. Let's have a look. Because it won't dissolve straight into alcohol. You've got to put some water in there first, dissolve it into a little bit of water, make a paste, and then add the alcohol afterwards. Um, but as I say, you can buy the stuff that's already dissolved in alcohol. I've got large quantities of this, so it doesn't really, it's not really cost effective to me to go out and spend 60 bucks on dye just for one paint job which is probably what two bottles of this uh, stuff dissolved in alcohol is going to cost um, so this is the kind of bottle you would buy where it's dissolved in alcohol and you just add that to your shellac so there we go okay that's pretty much dissolved so what I will do now is add my alcohol to this and let it sit for 24 hours to completely dissolve in there. There you go. And that will be used to thin my shellac out as well as I add it, so that it will be good for spraying. Right, now I'm just going to keep stirring this for a few minutes. And that's really my colours sorted. Okay, so now I'm going to open the can of shellac. I'll give it a good shake. And don't forget, this is de-waxed shellac. Let's give it a bit more of a stir in there. And I'm going to put about half a jar in there. got more on the tabletop than anything else and I knew that was gonna happen so now I'm gonna add my dye until this is thin enough to spray and the color looks good
It's quite coffee right now, doesn't it? Let's get a piece of wood in there to see what that looks like. Yeah, a little bit more than that, I think. See, that will spray nicely. It's got a nice run to it. But I can go as thin as I like, really, by just altering the amount that I allow through the actual spray gun. A bit more. see what that looks like so that's totally immersed you can see it's it's quite a strong amber color but I'll be spraying really fine passes so um, it's not going to look this dark on my first pass that's for sure all right well that's that for the next step we'll uh, put another video out So there she is, and I'm pretty pleased with that. That's the Peter Green vibe, um, that faded 50s burst. Um, very, very happy, lots of flame showing there. It's a really nice quality guitar kit. Um, so while I was spraying this, I concentrated the color into this area, and then more here. So you've got this, this teardrop effect going on. So very very light coats just build up this color just work on building up that color and um, I actually altered the ratio of shellac to 
um, dye. If you remember, I mixed the dye in alcohol. This is it. And then I added it to shellac in the bigger jar, which is this one. Well, there was too much shellac in there, so I took some of this out into a smaller size jar like this, and I filled it to about 42 ounces, and then I filled up with dye again to 80 ounces, so it was like a 50-50 ratio. And then that gave me the stronger color to get into here. So um, it's all about experimentation and what works. And uh, I've got this down pat now, so I could do this again, probably in an hour, I could make, get this started and then finish it off like in an afternoon. So um, my next job is gonna be to um, work on the back and get that ready color into the mahogany. I already know what dye I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the early American um, maple that I showed you early on. Uh, I'll see if I can find it, yeah. This one, because it's, uh, it's a very red colored dye and I think it's gonna bring out the, mah the mahogany without making it look too cheesy. So, uh, cause it'll add a bit of brown to it too. So my uh, goal is to, well, I am going to get this all assembled and uh, with all the mahogany dye done. And when it's all clamped together and glued, then I'm just gonna key everything up and do a coat of nitrocellulose um, shellac will take nitrocellulose perfectly. All you've got to do is key it. That's the beauty of shellac. If you buy de-waxed shellac, like in the can it's always de-waxed. Um, it will work as a perfect base coat or primer or sealer for pretty much any surface or finish that you want to put on it. Okay, well, I'll uh, keep you updated. Well, I hope you enjoyed that short video. I know I've had a lot of fun with that technique over the years. It's great to apply it to your jams. And uh, if you like these guitar stands, get yourself down to www.voodoocreek.com. I've got some offers on at the moment. They're handmade by me here in Colorado out of the best materials. They're built to last a lifetime with traditional joinery. And uh, yeah, we've got some offers on at the moment. So check them out and uh, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks very much. See you on the next one.